Hello, my creative friends. So today we are going to work on coloring our uh, paper weaving. So I did want to show you another paper, paper weaving I had. So this one's a really, really big one. So you could actually go really big or you could go pretty small. There's different ones you can do, but it's still the same. Um, way of um, weaving. So this one I've created a border as well as made my image. Okay, so I went ahead and used construction paper crayons. Remember I showed you in the first video the construction paper crayons and this is what the construction paper crayons look like with the drawings. Um, with this you're also going to need a bigger piece of construction paper. So this is like a regular 8 by 10 and then you're going to need a 9 by 12 to make the border of the paper weaving. So you are going to need a bigger piece of paper. So with this one, it's the same thing. I have white, so a white border, but this is still an 8.5 by uh, 10 piece of paper. So I do want to make sure that as you're doing your paper weaving that you do have a smaller piece of paper and then a bigger piece of paper. Next time I'm going to show you the weaving, you're going to need um, masking tape or some sort of tape. And then you're going to also need another piece of your paper. So for this one, I use black border and black weave paper. And um, it's up to you if you want it to match or not. I, I probably would make it match. So whatever color your weave is, I would make your uh, border the same color. Um, and so just make sure you have um, a bigger piece of paper for the weave, another piece of paper the size of the same color, um, scissors, and tape for the back. Okay? So if you're just using move all my stuff out of the way if you're just using a white piece of paper and you want to use crayons you can use crayons I am going to use oil pastels but you can use markers you can use crayons you could paint it it's up to you use what you have um, there's no right or wrong because we're just gonna turn this into a paper weaving project so just work on your coloring and finish your coloring. I think I am going to see if I can follow the rainbow. As you guys know, I love the rainbow. And the rainbow is basically the same thing as the color wheel. It's very similar. Rainbows are important because it also is a prism in science. Um, a lot of art and science actually um, intertwine with each other, which means they overlap. And you use a lot of science in art. Um, so your science teacher, whoever it is this year, she'll probably use a little bit of art with her science. Or you may even recognize and go, hey, we did that in art. I didn't realize that was... Kind of the same thing. So the good thing about oil pastels is you can let the colors overlap. I love the blending that happens with oil pastels. So when you color with crayons or markers or oil pastels, it's always good to color in a circular motion because if you color in a like back and forth line, then you'll actually see those lines and those lines can take away from your artwork. And the main focus of your artwork isn't the lines that are created. Well, sometimes they are, but for coloring purposes, it's not the lines that are created. It's the, um, the artwork itself. So I'm coloring, coloring, coloring. I'm going to let this overlap a little bit and blend. And I think what I'm going to do... Hmm, so many colors, so many choices. I think I'm going to add the blue here. It's kind of hard to color in a circular motion on the edge, but you do your best, right? As long as you have fun. Now, when you use oil pastels, these I call them little pills. They come up. Don't wipe them off. I know you may be tempted to want to wipe them, but don't wipe them because if you do, you can smear um, with oil pastels. I think I'm going to do blue here as well. 
And whenever I color, I always kind of outline the area that I'm coloring so it gives me that nice boundary. We all need boundaries. Boundaries are good. Tells me where I'm coloring. And then I'm going to add purple here. Oh, look at that. Complementary color of purple is orange and a yellow because they're across from each other on the color wheel. So if you look at the color wheel, you have violet here and across from violet is yellow. So they're complementary colors. Um, orange and purple also look good together. But when you have a definition, if you're ever asked on a test, what is a complementary color? There are two colors that are beside or across each other from each other on the color wheel. So you have blues and oranges, you have violets and yellows, and you have red and green. Okay, so just color in. And you all get the point. So just finish coloring your artwork. And then next time I see you, um, we're going to, the next part of this project will be the actual paper weaving. We may have a pause because I believe International Dot Day is coming up, so we might have a pause of a project to do, but uh, we will see what happens. Let's see, what should I put there? I think I'm going to put red because after the color wheel is red, and then it goes to Purple. Purple and red are beside each other on the color wheel. But I don't want to put orange there, so you know what? I am going to put pink. It's the only place I'm going to have pink. But that's all right. Again, circular motion. Just like this. Pink's going to be the one that stands out because I am going to put yellow right back here. So for International Dot Day, you're going to need some regular table salt and liquid glue and some thick paper, cardstock paper. Um, and then you'll get to see what we do for that. So finish this up. Make sure you have a bigger piece of paper, and I'll show you how to do this, and then we I'll show you how to um, weave it. All right, guys. Bye.